having grown up in Long Island, not too far from the water, I've always enjoyed and appreciated as I've gotten older, trips to the mountains. Also now being from Florida where our land is very, very flat, to me there's something very fascinating about how the land just comes up out of nowhere, especially in big sky country where you can see the mountains for miles. And if you go for a hike up into the mountains, you have the opportunity to get a view that is unmistakably one of the most beautiful in the world. Because you see things, again, for miles and miles. Sometimes you can see 80 miles out into the distance on a clear day. The air is a little bit lighter, so you have to appreciate every breath. Every ounce of oxygen that comes into you is something that you say, wow, I'm glad that I'm able to breathe and give thanks for the gift of life. We have the opportunity when we go up into the mountains to exert ourselves and to enjoy and appreciate the creation that God made in a whole new way. Now it's kind of interesting, this weekend Father Josh is away and he get, and I get along really, really well, but we are incredibly opposite when it comes to our appreciation of things. For instance, at dinner time, he can sit and eat like three hamburgers in one sitting, and I have one small little chicken breast. Father Josh on his vacations, he loves going to the swamp, to the lowest place on earth to go fishing. He's gone this weekend actually, and I like going to the mountains. So we've kind of determined that we like different things, but even people who like different things can still have a great appreciation. That's why I think God in the scriptures often talks about different places where he goes, where Jesus visited. He visited the sea, he visited the mountains, he visited everything in between. He knows every ounce of our universe because he created it. So this particular week when we hear in our scriptures three readings, each one takes us to a special high point in the landscape. The first reading from Genesis speaks of Abraham going up into the mountain, being called there by God. Now remember, Abraham had come from a land long ways away from the promised land. He was from Ur of the Chaldeans, an area that was known for false gods, for human sacrifice, for many things that would not be in line with our own particular teaching today and our own thought. But Abraham learned, and Abraham learned because he was a faithful man and because he continually said yes to God. So when God invited him up the mountain, this was Mount Moriah, our first stop in the scriptures today, which brings us to a place where he was called upon to take his own son and to have a sacrifice there. Now that's unthinkable to us, but again, the culture of people in the primitive times and where there was not necessarily an understanding of just one God, they had a lot of false gods, so they made sacrifices of all kinds to these gods. But our God said to Abraham at the last minute, when Abraham relented and said yes to God's demands, God said no, don't do it because the human person is to be respected. And so save your son, but go get a ram because the human person at the highest order of creation, it was a message to respect the gift of human life, but also a message of fidelity because he was going to reward then Abraham because Abraham was going to go and say yes to all of the demands. Just think about that for a moment of taking a family member, knowing what might end up happening to them at your own hands. Well, that's not what we're called to do. And so as a result, Abraham was rewarded for his faithfulness. This is really seeing a demanding God that demands faithfulness, he demands fidelity, he demands loyalty, and he wants us to listen to him. How often perhaps do we not even listen to God? We don't know what being faithful to God is because we are not even tuned in to him. And so in this particular uh, scripture reading, we hear about being more faithful to God, and maybe that's part of our Lenten journey. You're here tonight, this is a good start to faithfulness. But what else is God calling you to? Not just here for one hour of this week, 
And this should be a high point in the week, coming to appreciate the gift of the Eucharist. But how is it that when we go from here, we are continually faithful to God, listening to him and saying yes. Our second reading indirectly takes us up to a mountain, is the Mount of Calvary, where Christ was crucified, where he had, cr he had carried a heavy cross all the way up that mountain, something that we think about and we reenact whenever we do the stations of the cross, which surround us as beautiful artwork, but we're also called to enter into those stations and when we enter into the stations, when we enter and go up the Mount of Calvary, our second reading, our second mountain to go up, we hear about a God who is not demanding, but we hear about a God who is loving, about a God who is merciful, about a God who gives, who does not just expect from us. And so it's really up to us when we hear this reading to look at a crucifix to see the arms of Christ outstretched, especially during this season of Lent, when we can realize that we are lovable. I think one of the biggest challenges that many face today in their own challenges and in their own lives, one of the things that they have to get over is each one of us is lovable. Each one of us has such great potential in the eyes of God, but we have to allow ourselves to be loved. We have to allow ourselves to realize that God created us in his image and likeness. And as a part of his family, we are called to live with him each and every day to receive that love and to spread it to others as well. When we see ourselves as loved, well, maybe then and only then can we truly love others in a way that God loves others. So this is really a situation and a scene of a redeeming God, of a God who loves us so much, who calls us also to great love. And our third stop is there on Mount Tabor, the Mount of Transfiguration. This reading is proclaimed every second Sunday of Lent. It should be very familiar to us, where we see not a demanding God, not a redeeming God, we see a glorified God we see Peter, James, and John, those who are closest to Jesus, being invited on a hike, going up the mountain. They didn't know where they were going, so you can only imagine how they felt when suddenly Jesus changed before them, and they saw not a man who was able to perform miracles, not someone who gave great compassion, not someone who was a wonderful speaker, but they saw him in all his glory. They saw the Messiah. And suddenly their world was turned around and they would have wanted to go and tell everyone about this Jesus when they went down the mountain. But that's not what Jesus wants them to do. He says, keep this to yourself, contemplate it, sit with it, understand it, let it fill your heart. And then we will together go and proclaim the good news. So in this glorified Christ, it should give us hope for one day being in heaven with the Almighty, to realize that even though we are wounded, that even though we have weaknesses, that even though we may struggle, God will make us perfect in his sight when we stand before him on the mountaintop at the threshold and the gate of heaven. And there he will make us whole and give us all that we need to be perfect in his sight. So a God of hope, a God of fidelity, a God of great love. As we go into this Lenten season, we're just about 10 days into it. We just wonder where you are at so far in your Lenten journey. Are you going up the mountain with him? Are you realizing that God wants something better for us? Because this is not a season to sit back and relax and be a couch potato. This is a season spiritually where we are called upon to walk with God. A season of conversion, a season of renewal, a season of looking at our own lives, giving them to God and growing in the gift of faith, in the gift of love, and in the gift of hope. I spoke about going up the mountain and I love to go hiking. I'm not a rock climber, but I do like to walk up the mountain and it's a challenge. And again, it's something that it's, you feel like you're getting a good workout when you go up the mountain. 
but we can't stay on top of the mountain. The apostles, they wanted to make memorials or tents as they're called in the scripture to Elijah and to Moses and to Jesus to say, we've been here in this place, but that's not what we are about. I hope coming to mass on a regular basis isn't like coming and making a tent where we dwell in for an hour and then we go outside of it and go back to our lives, which maybe are not pleasing to God. No, we don't build memorials to our faith, we live it. And by living our faith, we are called also to come down the mountain and to go out, to be able to realize that the journey up may be difficult, but sometimes the journey down is just as challenging. I find it kind of hard actually to go down the mountain, maybe because I'm six foot four and my center of gravity is like totally out of whack. So I always feel like I'm gonna fall over and I have to be very, very careful and I kind of cling sometimes in places where the road is narrow. But I know for myself, maybe I'm called upon to trust a little bit more to realize that the journey down to proclaim the good news of Christ is not one that we do alone, but we do in partnership with him, that God is with us every step of the journey. But we cannot be afraid to go on this journey with the Lord, to go up, to receive, and to come back down. So this Lent, just think of that beautiful journey up and down the mountain, and being able to realize that when we come back out, we will see the world in a totally different way. I find sometimes when I go on a hike and I'm away and you go up the mountain, you get to your certain goal and your spot, I like to think about what do I wanna leave there? What in my own life do I need to leave behind so that when I go back down, everything looks different and maybe I'm a little bit lighter overall. And I think it's good to be able to do that, to think of situations in our own life that we perhaps need to leave behind because it shows that we are growing and that our journey is taking us somewhere that we never know where the destination may be, at least here on earth, because ultimately the destination is with God in heaven.